Hey YouTube, what's up? Carl Schuf here from creativecodingclub.com where every week I give my students a brand new lesson to help them get better with the GreenSock animation platform. Today I want to share with you my lesson on the GSAP Motion Path plugin. I'm going to show you how to take your SVG artwork and have it be animated along an SVG path, all right? So I'm going to provide you with this SVG file and this starter code pen so that you can follow along, all right? So sit back, watch, see what I'm doing, and then you can do it on your own. Enjoy the lesson. Today I'm going to introduce you to GreenSock's Motion Path plugin. I will use this simple example to introduce you to Motion Path Plugin's most popular features and help you understand why your first attempts with this tool may look like this when we really want them to look like this. Along the way, we'll talk about settings such as Path, Align, Align Origin, Auto Rotate, setting custom start and end values, and a bunch more. What you learn today will provide the essential foundation for doing more complex animations like this multiple infinite path followers animation that we will tackle next time. So let's start out by reviewing our SVG assets. Here in Boxy SVG, I have this SVG built with everything we'll be using today. In the top left hand corner here, you'll see that I have a rectangle that has a class of box. It is 100 wide by 100 tall here. Now, I have this arrow element here that has its top left hand corner lined up to the bottom right of the box. This arrow is in a group with a class of arrow. And then we have this path here, which we're going to get my arrow to follow. And this path element has a class of path. And this gray rectangle here, I'm going to use as sort of a visual guide, but it's important to note that it is the same size as my green box here. So now that we know what everything's named, I'm going to go ahead and right click and say copy outer SVG. And we'll head on over to CodePen and code our motion path animation. So you'll see here I have an absolutely blank file. I'm going to go ahead and paste in the SVG code. And now you'll see we have things exactly as we expect with the arrow lined up with the bottom of the green box here. Now I'm gonna head over to my JavaScript and I saved myself some typing by creating a blank tween with the name of animation. And I'm hooking that up to GS Dev Tools so that we can scrub through that animation. Now in order to use the Motion Path plugin, we need to load it. So let's go to the JavaScript settings here and you'll see that we're already loading in GSAP and GS Dev Tools. So what I'm gonna do here is just type in motion, and then I'm gonna go down here and click on GSAP Motion Path Plugin. And now I hit save and close, and I'm ready to go. So in order to get my arrow to follow the path, I'm going to use the arrow as the target of my tween, and I'm going to tell the Motion Path Plugin to use the element with a class of path as the path to follow. And now you'll see something sort of happened. The arrow is moving in a curvy sort of motion, but if we go back to the start, you'll see that the arrow isn't exactly attached to the path, but it is in some sort of way following it. Well, what's happening here with this simplified syntax is that the motion path plugin is creating the animation by changing transform values but in the arrow's natural starting position, it's already offset visually by 100 pixels from the left and top corner of the SVG, which is why it appears visually offset from the coordinates that are coming from this path. And this is no fault at all of Motion Path Plugin, it's just how transforms work when applied to groups. And if you need a refresher, just watch my video, SVG Groups and Applying Transforms. It's loaded with helpful information. Now, if I were to change things around and use the box as the target, you would see now that the box is perfectly aligned with the path. It's important to note that naturally, the box was at a position of zero, zero. So if we wanna just use this syntax and have it follow like this, you would then have to create your artwork always at the top, sort of zeroed out, okay? However, the good folks at GreenSock don't want to make you do that all the time, so there is another syntax that we can use. So let me go ahead here, and instead of using box as the target, I'm gonna go back to using arrow, 
and I'm gonna make this tween just a little bit longer with a duration of two, and we're gonna use an ease of none. With that out of the way, I'm going to get rid of this string value here, and we're going to switch over to object syntax, which allows me to pass in multiple properties to configure the motion path plugin. The first thing we're gonna do is tell it which path to use, which is still gonna be the element with a class of path, but we're also going to have access now to an align property and we're going to align to the path. And now look what we have. Our arrow is stuck to the path. It's being aligned to it. We're getting rid of that original offset that we had before. And you'll see that the top left hand corner is perfectly glued to that path. And that's closer to what we were going for. Now with this align property, we could also switch this over to the keyword string of self and you get something a little bit different here. You'll notice that the arrow is starting in its natural position. And what it's doing here is it's technically moving the path coordinates to the arrow. And now the arrow is following that path as if it was glued to its top left hand corner. Now, that comes in handy sometimes, but it's not what we want right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the align property back to the element with a class of path. And now we're back to where we were. But what if we want to have it aligned to the center of the arrow here? Well, there's another property called the align origin. And this is an array of progress values between zero and one for the X and Y. So if we do 0 0.5, that's in the center horizontally, and 0 0.5 is gonna be centered vertically. And now you'll see that pretty much where the red dot is, that's where the arrow is being attached to the path, okay? And if you don't believe me, I can do a very quick gsap.set and tell the arrow to have its opacity brought down to 0 0.6. And now you can see that red dot in the center is stuck to the path and we're getting really close to having things exactly the way I want. The last thing I wanna do is get the arrow to point in the direction that it's following the path. So let me just get rid of this opacity change here and I'm going to add in an auto rotate true. And there we go. The arrow is perfectly following that path. We'll watch it again. Very nice. I'm loving it. Now before we wrap up, I just want to show you about two other properties that are going to help us a lot next time. And they are start and end values. With start and end values, we can tell our target where on the path we want it to start and where we want it to end. And these are going to be progress values between zero and one. So to keep things easy, if I set my start value to be 0.5, you'll get something like this, where you'll see that now at the beginning of the animation, the arrow is exactly halfway in the middle of my path. And it just assumes that the end will be the end of the path. However, I can put in any value that I want. I could say something like, oh, you know what? The end is going to be 0.8. And as you guess, it's gonna go not exactly to the end here. What's super cool about this is that we can wrap around the end value, which as you can imagine would be one, but let's set it to 1.5. And now you'll see that it comes back to the beginning and then to the middle again, all right? So it starts in the middle, goes to the end, and then comes back to the middle. And that's going to be a key component to tap into when next week we create these multiple path followers, as I call them, all right? So definitely try to build your own simple motion path plugin demo this week, and also check out the motion path plugin docs. They're filled with tons of additional information. 
This video has some great stuff in it as well that will help you, and as you scroll on down, you'll see there are very many advanced uses of this plugin, okay? We can't cover them all in a 15 minute video, um, but these demos will be very helpful. And Greensock also has a motion path showcase and how to demos, all right? So here in the showcase, you'll see sort of the high end fancy work done with motion path. And here in the how-to demos, you'll see more sort of stripped down informational demos. All of these are worth studying. So do your homework and come back next week and we'll build our multiple path followers demo. Hey everybody, Carl Schuf here from Creative Coding Club. I just wanted to give you a little walkthrough of some of the technical and fun things we cover in my SVG animation with Greensock course. Check it out. In this example, I show how text as a text element and text as a path compare. As you can see here, they both can be animated in the same ways, but each way has its own pros and cons, which of course I explain in much greater detail in the lesson. However, the real secret here is that this timeline here animates both the text items with exactly the same code. This lesson here shows you how to animate text on a path. One of the benefits of using a text element is that we can animate it on a path and very easily update it. How cool is that? It is awesome. And I absolutely love this lesson here where we took some design cues from the Greensock homepage. Each time you click on a dot, this fun wiggly line just grows to wherever you clicked. And I just love how it's really not a lot of code. At the end of the day, it's a timeline with two simple tweens. And although I rarely call my lessons fancy, there's something I like about the simple elegance of these rectangles as they animate in and out. And what's cool about this is that on the surface, let me just pause you here, it doesn't really look like too much. We have these four rectangles and their strokes are being drawn in from the bottom center and watch as they wrap around, they meet at the top with the center one sort of coming in first and then they all catch up and then they erase from the bottom, all right? Now something like this for a beginner could be quite a challenge. That's why I just love breaking down the code line by line. Let's just crack it open real quick, and you're going to see that it's literally a single from to with a stagger on it. Of course, knowing what the draw SVG values helps, but I teach you that stuff inside and out. And you may see a line of code like this and be like, what is gsap.utils.distribute? Base amount, what's that all doing? Well, just quickly, that's how I am having the opacity fade out progressively on each rectangle. But again, those are the details I spend time explaining to you in the lesson, so you'll know exactly how to use it and the variety of effects you can achieve. And when I teach things like stroke effects, I love putting together these types of demos that show you exactly how each effect works. So we can not just draw something in, but we can undraw it, or we can do it in both directions. And on demos like this, it's all controlled with GS Dev tools, so you can scrub through and control it however you like. I just love how this here draws in from the center and then reverses out. That just gives you a super cool effect. And this next one, watch how this segment seamlessly loops around the star, all right? You can't tell where it stops and begins, and it just keeps going around and around. And for each of these effects, it requires just a little bit of a trick, and we keep building on things that we previously learned. And if you look over here to the code, I'm using one of my favorite tricks of keeping all those animations in a modular fashion and gluing them together into one timeline, which again, we can control with GS Dev Tools and even control the animating of the titles coming in. It's these sort of details that again, I love showing you how to do so you can build them yourself. And when we're done animating strokes around rectangles and stars, we can kick it up to the next level and do more complex things like this plane. And again, the beauty here is one line of code and we have this amazing output. And I also love building these sort of rudimentary projects. I call this the worst SVG drawing app possible, but as we code it line by line, you're going to see exactly what you can start doing when you start learning how to program SVGs. We're gonna do this in just a few lines of code with awesome functionality like boom clear. And of course, 
Again, the focus is on what can we accomplish with our limited knowledge of SVG and JavaScript in just a few lines of code. This whole thing is driven off a single click event listener where we get the X and Y of where we click, and basically we're just updating a polyline with new points. Trust me, when you get here in the course, you'll know what all this means. And if you follow me for any amount of times, you'll know I love things that wiggle and bounce, all right? I just love the amount of expression you can put into text effects when using GSAP. And here, we're just using SVG text that scales and bounces wonderfully. And what we're doing is we're tapping into the keyframe syntax that I taught all the way back in GSAP 3 Express. If you're not familiar with that, definitely check out that free course. But again, I love building on concepts I've shown you before and how to intertwine them with new things like SVG text. And to drive the point home even further, we can build cool animations where we're just animating three circles and four lines of text and have them look really pretty cool. And what do we have here in the code? It's just two simple staggered animations literally code that you could write after taking my beginner course. But here, the focus is on SVG and understanding what are all the bits inside this SVG code that make it work. And that's what I love diving deep into with all the weekly lessons. And I love demystifying animations like this, which are really just three tilted rectangles that have a blend mode and they're animating over a gradient background. And there's an extra bonus where you can just click to randomize the background pattern and get some pretty cool results with literally just three or four lines of code. Technical things like view boxes and aspect ratios, I do my best to keep it fun and show a variety of different uses. So if you want to master SVG animation with GreenSock, check out this course, get started for as low as $2.95 a month, and gain access to all my GreenSock training. See you in the club.